Okay guys, so we've got to the last part of our system management, which will be SCP, which stands for Secure Copy Protocol. We've done DHCP, we've done NTP, we've had a look at SNMP, also we've managed to SSH to the box. The last thing is to do file transfer. Now I know a lot of you out there might be saying something like, why don't you use FTP or TFTP? To be honest, the amount of hassle I've had doing it to and from the ASA, it just hasn't been worth it. So I've done SCP. And if we have a look at our box, let's just make sure that we have reachability. And even though this is an ASA course, the majority of the configuration will be done on the Ubuntu box. So let's make sure that I can still ping 172.16.0.1, the ASA, which I can. Um, we also should have SSH access for this to be accessible. So if I say SSH Ibrahim at 172.16.0.1, we add Ibrahim's password. Okay, so I still have SSH access. So let me just see, the first thing that I'm going to do, there's two things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push a file to the ASA from our Linux box, and then I'm gonna pull a file from the ASA to the Linux box. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a file that I'm going to push across to the ASA. And if I jump on the ASA, and I just type dir, dir directory, we can see there's no real directory files here. So if I just create one, there's nothing called test. So I'm going to create a file called test. And to do that, I'm going to say nano etsy default, and we're going to call it test.cfg. Now, all I'm going to say is, this is how we roll at Router Coach. Let's save that file. And if I do an CD etc default and if I do an ls here we can see this is the file that I created which was called test.cfg and to look at the contents of that file on the Linux box if I just do a cat test.cfg and you can see this is the message this is how we roll at Router Coach. all right now what I need to do is just push that across to the ASA and to do that if I do scp minus v and I say test.cfg then the username on the ASA which is Ibrahim at 172.16.0.1 and the file name that I'm going to push across will be called test.cfg in lowercase yeah it's asking for the Ibrahim's password and I've added the password. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. And we've come up with this message. So I don't know minus V, which means the verbose. And this is how I do a debug to see if there's anything gone wrong. And if you come up with a message called lost connection, what the lost connection reason is, it's usually, and this is from the documentation on, online, it says, the usual reason for that is the SCP program on the remote host either failed to start or else it exited prematurely. This could have happened because the SC program doesn't exist on the remote host. Now I remember that I didn't actually enable SCP on the ASA, so I'll jump across to the ASA conf t and i will say ssh s copy enable jump back onto my linux box and try that command again add the password and it says that that it's worked so let's have a look in the directory if i do directory yes now we see test in lowercase here now to have a look at the contents of the file on an asa you type more so more test with lowercase dot cfg and we can see that the file has been transferred that is superb what i now want to do is pull a file so this file called scp should actually be a config file so let me have a look at that yeah and it's got the full config of the asa so if i now jump onto my linux box 
So the, the main thing that we take away from this is that we need to do the S copy enable on the ASA to get SCP to work. And that is after we've got all SSH working from the previous video. So if you don't have SSH enabled, and what I mean is like the Diffie-Hellman key exchanges enabled, then this won't work. But if you've got SSH working, then SCP can work. Okay, so the next st step is that we want to pull that SCP file into this folder. And if I just look here, we can see that there's nothing called SCP. And this SCP is the config file. So to pull it, what I will do is SCP and then the username on the remote host, the location of the remote host, which is 172.16.0.1. Now, the next part is where is the file located on the remote host? It's actually located in disk zero and it's called SCP. And where are you going to put it to? We're going to put it into the Etsy file and I'm going to call it a different name. I'm going to call it backup backup.cfg let's see if that works let's put in the password it said that it's transferred so let's have a look at ls oh sorry just ls not minus l and now we see that there's a config file here called backup.cfg to have a look at the contents of that file let's say cat backup dot cfg and you can see that we have the contents of the asa running config all right so that's it for scp i would do it this way as pulling and pushing from the linux box because if you try to scp from the asa sometimes you get permission timeouts and it's a lot more hassle than it's worth but um, that's it for system management i will see you guys in the next video